Hello and welcome back to the NBA DFS Slate Breakdown for Friday, February, March 8th. We're here. We're breaking it down. We got a nice little slate to go over. Uh, yesterday's slate was pretty wild. Uh, Anthony Edwards just absolutely dominated. And we're going to see if he can do it again tonight. However, he is questionable. And that is one of the big pieces of news uh, to watch. Now, before we get into it, want to bring your attention to some trial offers that we do have through the app stores, Android or iPhone app store. You can get a free day, a free seven day trial. If you've never used us before, just download the app, get the trial through the app store and you can try us out for free. What better deal is there than that? Now, let's get involved. Let's uh, get into it. So we got a six game uh, slate and finally we don't have, you know, crazy different start hours where it's like a split slate almost. Everything is in within one hour of start time. Um, six gamers should be pretty fun. And let me uh, just make sure we got it all set up here. Uh, so yeah, now a lot to go through. As always, we'll start out on point guard, highest owned, DeHante Murray. Guy's been absolutely crushing it. His uh, salary is back below 9K, and you gotta like that. The dude has a 60 point ceiling, and he's in a decent matchup here. So I do not mind going to DeHante Murray whatsoever. He's been in in the last six games. He's been in four of the six perfect lineups. So. Uh, definitely got to consider DeHante, even though he is at high ownership. I'm personally getting a lot of him. Next, Kyle Lowry, 5.1K. Uh, look, he's played 36, 33, and 36 minutes as a starter. So the minutes are going to be there, uh, which is, the you know, the good part. The down part is he's not in the easiest matchup. And... I don't know if he really has a ceiling anymore. You know, he used to have a ceiling as a player, but now his ceiling is like 35, and that's in a great matchup. Uh, in a poor matchup, his ceiling might be 6x. He's going high-owned. It's it's kind of hard for me to get there. So I don't love the play. I'm not getting too much of him. If we look through what he's done the rest of this year, he has two 40-point games. So I guess... You know, there is the possibility to get there. Uh, maybe I'm getting shortchanging him a little bit, but uh, I just can't do it at this stage in his career. Next, we got uh, McKickick. And look, he went absolutely nuts last time, 4.8K, and went for 35. The big news here is that Trey Mann is questionable. If Trey Mann's out, his minutes are probably locked in to, you know, mid 30s 32 34 something like that he's going to be running point and have a ton of control of the ball in a very good matchup so Trey Mann is out I probably love him with Trey Mann playing I actually would prefer Trey Mann at lower ownership so uh, while he had a really good game uh, you know at this ownership I think he's a little too over owned uh, but mind you, this, uh, Hornets versus, uh, Washington game is gonna bring some, uh, DFS goodness for sure. Both teams are terrible. Both teams don't like defense. Uh, so I'm definitely intrigued a bit by the game as a whole. Jordan Poole has been playing great off the bench, which is, uh, weird because he was terrible, you know, playing in, uh, earlier in the season, but he's playing some more minutes off the bench, 32 minutes, 38 minutes. It's just his usage is way up. He's taking way more shots. Uh, and we're seeing a ceiling like we saw when he was in golden state again. So I don't mind Jordan pool, uh, getting a little bit, not going overboard. Scary. Terry is a pivot that I like. He went nuts last night, played 40 minutes, likely not to play uh 40 minutes again, but, uh, I'm definitely a little bit intrigued here. It is another up pace spot. He's probably going to play a lot of minutes. He's playing well with this team. He's definitely kind of figuring things out again. His shot attempts, once again, were only like 17. It's around that area that he's been lately. 
Uh, the big difference, he just had a ton of assists, a couple rebounds, and that really catapulted. Not to mention, he made five threes last night, which, you know, we can't count on that from uh, night to night. But we're happy with the 40s, and he can absolutely hit the 40s uh, and score the ball and do all that. Next, I like the same game, SGA. Uh, SGA is matchup proof. You know, Miami is a very good defensive team. It's a slower game. Uh, but look, the guy is going to play a ton of minutes. This game is likely coming down to the wire. And when the games are coming down to the wire, that's when he has the real ceiling. Uh, that's what happened with Phoenix. That's what happens with, you know, Toronto or Charlotte. Uh, they stay close and he takes over late. And we really need that to happen for SGA to have his full, full ceiling. Either that or he just has to go absolutely nuts from the start and, uh, you know, still play well under the fourth, which doesn't always happen if he's going nuts. But I do like SGA in this spot. Absolutely willing to go there, even against a tough defense. On to DraftKings, high owned pork point guards, Jordan Poole, McKickick, and Darius Garland. Uh, Darius Garland, he... Still without Mobley, still without Mitchell. So definitely can go there. My one thing is that without those guys, he's down to like 1.03 fantasy point per minute or something. It is nothing that great, but yet his price tag is up to 7.6. So I definitely have some apprehension here. Um, and then Minnesota is just pretty good defensively and a pretty good team altogether. So... I'm not getting to a ton of them. Um, there is a path. His usage will be there, so he could do well. I'm just personally not going right there right now. On to the point guard matchup tool. We got Jalen Brunson running it. Uh, best matchup in the game as far as uh, fantasy point production. Uh, this tool works off like a seven-game rolling average, so a little bit like a DVOA for football. So it, uh, it is absolutely kind of interesting seeing Brunson so high when Orlando really hasn't been that, uh, that great. Or sorry, Orlando is not a team you generally like to pick on. Both of these teams are incredibly slow, and seeing a 204 total is just insanely low at you know this age in basketball. The one thing, though, is he's going to play a lot of minutes. Played 37 last year time 40 before that if he plays he's gonna go for 40 38 40 minutes and uh have a ton of usage so i get it if you want to go there next tyus jones and mckee kick is uh popping up i i like all of them i like jones i like mckee kick don't mind some brunson for a payup option and let's get over to shooting guard dehante murray jordan Poole, karis lavert uh, so Levert is jumping in, played 36 minutes the other day, 30 the game before that. Once again, Struess is out, uh, Mitchell's out, Mobley is out. So there's minutes for him to be to play. When he gets minutes, we know there's a huge ceiling. So I'm willing to take some shots. Wish he was a little lower owned, but I, I'm absolutely willing to take shots with him. I think he's in an interesting spot. Now some pivots I like. Kelly Oubre. Uh, price is way up there. But he's playing solid minutes. You know, mid-30s in minutes. And coming off the bench, his usage has just been very, very high. Uh, and he's in a decent spot versus the Pelicans. Coming off the bench, getting away from some of their better defenders a little bit. And so I'm intrigued to go to some Oubre. Don't, I'm not crazy about the super high price, but uh, he's been doing it. Herb Jones, uh, this is a guy I've been going to a lot lately, Un unfortunately. Um, you know, he's been consistent around 30 lately, but he did have recently that big run where he had a couple 40s. He can get there. He just needs a couple steals and blocks to go his way. Uh, last game, he only had two steals, no blocks, and those type of games, he's generally not going to get there when all – of the Pelicans are healthy. Uh, he gets there all the time when somebody's out, but uh, 
when all of them are healthy, he needs some extra steals and blocks, but 76ers have not been good uh, versus the small forward 24. So I'm definitely intrigued to go with uh, some Herb there. And let's get over to DK, shooting guard, high own, pool, McKee kick, and Brandon Miller. Brandon Miller is pretty intriguing to me. I'm not getting into a ton of him, but this matchup is very good and he can absolutely get there. I mean, over his last 20, he's averaging 20 points a game, you know, almost five rebounds, three assists. He gets a couple steals and blocks that fall his way and, you know, it's a really solid night. So he has a 50 point ceiling at 7K. So I think you got to be intrigued. Currently, I'm not getting too much of him, but uh, I definitely could later in the day. And over to the matchup tool, we got Bilal Kulabai, John Kankar, and Trey Mann. Uh, like I said, I do like Mann a little bit better than McKeek. He also put up 35 uh, last game in 34 minutes. So he's getting a couple extra minutes than McKeek. Uh, and he just has a higher ceiling than what we've seen with McKeek. He can get you 40 where I don't know if McKeek can. And let's get over to small forward. So, high own Danny Advedia, Kyle Kuzma, Karis Levert. Obviously, pretty high own game, this Charlotte and Washington one. Kuzma likely starts the center spot again, uh, and definitely intrigued by him. He's been very good. This 8.5K salary is getting up there a bit, but he still does have that 50, 60 point ceiling, so I don't mind going there. Uh, but it is pulling me off of him a little bit. And then I think Denny is in a great spot at only 6K. He has a giant ceiling also, or 6,600. Uh, he's just not as consistent, you know, with scoring. He's not as consistent getting into the 40s. But when he gets into the 40s, he's usually getting into the high 40s or maybe even 50 just because he can fill that stat sheet so many different ways. So I am intrigued by uh, going with Denny as well, who is likely starting a power forward. Karis LeVert, we went over. Davis Bertans is cheap. I want to bring attention to him just because he had 26 and 26 minutes the last two games. Uh, he is 0.86 fantasy point per minute guy. So, I mean, he's getting 26 minutes. He becomes pretty intriguing. And... Don't mind that as a filler. Brandon Miller, we talked about a little bit. And Kelly Oubre, we talked about as well as Herb Jones. And got to bring up Jake, Jake Larrava. Uh, guy's been killing it lately. When he gets minutes, he's been producing 28 in 28 minutes, 26 in 26 minutes, 34 in 29 minutes, 41 and 32 minutes uh it's hard to not see this and be you know a little bit interested he's been getting the minutes and now he has a very good spot versus atlanta right now ownership's not going there so i am intrigued there is a little bit of uh scariness with going hit to him because as you can see his minutes kind of jumped all over the place uh lately but Grizzlies are still big time hurt and they might as well see what this kid can do at this point because uh, <laughs> as we know their season's over and I thought I had one more yep I got Kankar uh, looked at as well look he's 4800 so much cheaper than uh, Laravia but uh, maybe not you know May, may not get as many minutes. He's been right around 28, 31 uh, a lot, but he should start. It's versus Atlanta, so absolutely interesting. And Luke uh, Kennard is doubtful, so I think his minutes are a little bit more secure here and a little bit, you know, intrigued here. I think he's a little safer option, uh, but may not have quite the ceiling as uh, good old Jakey. So... Getting over to small forward on DraftKings, we got Denny, we got Miles Bridges, and Corey Crispert. Uh, Crispert's definitely interesting at 4,400. Uh, I do worry about his minutes a little bit. He entered the starting lineup last time, and last game only played 19 minutes. I think there is a fairly clear path to him getting pushed out of minutes if, say, Poole is playing well. 
So I do worry a little bit about that. There's also, you know, Bilal there, and then they could put uh, Rashawn Holmes at center. So there's a bunch of different ways. I do like him coming off the bench a little bit more, but 4,400 is absolutely a price where we need to consider him. He can get anywhere from, you know, 20 to 28 or 30 minutes if he's playing well. So uh, definitely intriguing. It's a GPP play you know, through and through just because his scoring can be absolutely all over the place. I do want to bring up Sadiq Bey. I currently am not getting much of him. Um, however, 5,700 on draft th- DraftKings, I think you need to consider him. One thing, I looked up the rotations yesterday or the last game when Jalen Johnson got hurt. What happened was Sadiq Bey pretty much pre- played the rest of the game. I think there's a real shot that he plays 38, 40 minutes a game, 40 minutes in this game. Uh, Going to be at power forward most of the time. And I think it just helps his overall fantasy output a little bit. So absolutely intrigued by Bay on DraftKings. Not getting too much of him on, uh, fan, on FanDuel, but uh, definitely a bit intrigued. On to small forward matchup tool. So... This is another thing to look at about Bay. So starting at small forward, he is in the negative. Starting at power forward, he's in the positive here as far as a matchup. And I do expect this to actually be flipped where Hunter starts at small forward and Bay starts at power forward. Uh, Hunter is slightly bigger, but uh, I think Bay is just a little more naturally uh, natural fit at power forward over hunter even though hunter is you know about an inch taller or so all right so matchup tool here franz wagner herbert jones Jaden mcdaniels coming in the top wagner is a bit interesting he really scores you know from the outside pretty well and there's a bonus there for it and uh nicks are giving up some rebounds so a bit intrigued there uh herb jones we talked about him he's in a good spot one issue here is the way he scores a lot of his points is steals and blocks, and Philadelphia has been good at limiting those things at least. But he can make a couple more shots, get a few more rebounds, and definitely make up some of that. So getting over to power forward here, we got Bruno Fernando, Denny Advedia, and Kyle Kuzma. I want to bring attention to Fernando. He played 25 minutes yesterday. A lot of that was after uh johnson got hurt so he did he didn't really play power forward at all he pretty much just split with capella but with them smaller at power forward there's a little more reason to make sure they have a big man there so i expect uh capella and fernando to maybe just split at center tonight which does make fernando a little bit interesting we know they haven't really been giving capella extra run and Fernando's only 4,200, so I could see him uh, kind of getting a little extra run and getting it done. So in 25 minutes, put up 31. He could get 25 minutes again and, and do that without a doubt. Danny Kuzma we talked about. Now let's go to Grant Williams. He's 5K. Played 33 minutes last night, 40 the game before that, 27 the game before that, 30 before that. So I I do that to show you he is playing very solid minutes right now. Charlotte still big time hurt. The Wizards are going to go small. It's likely Kuzma, you know, starting at uh, the five. So it makes some sense for the Hornets to just match up and put Grant Williams on him instead of having Nick Richards try and... Uh, run around and guard him so I do think there's a path to Grant Williams uh, success and he's been playing pretty well in Charlotte his fantasy production has been much better than it was uh, when he was over in Dallas so a bit intrigued to go there and you know ownership's a little lower so don't mind uh, that aspect of it as well Power four, or did I talk about? Yeah, I talked about everything. Power forward on DraftKings, Kyle Kuzma, Miles Bridges, Corey Crispert. Uh, Bridges, 8.4K, can absolutely get there. He is half the offense. The one thing I do want to bring attention to is with man in the lineup and McKee kick, he just hasn't been quite as good. His fantasy point per minute 
uh, with those guys is more around one. Whereas, you know, without those guys and all their injuries, he was at like 1.08, 1.1. So he's lost uh, some output as we've seen here recently. Can that bounce back in a game versus the Wizards, which is a great matchup? Absolutely. So I get why people are going there. Uh, personally, I want his price to come down a little bit more before I start playing him again, but this is a very, very good matchup for him. Chris Burt, we talked about, and we'll get over to the matchup tool. Miles Bridges at the very top. Zion Williamson right underneath, and Jalen Williams after that, all of which I uh, am interested in and will consider playing. On to the center spot, Bruno Fernando, Jaron Jackson, and Clint Capella. Uh, Jaron Jackson, he is 9K now, but he has that ceiling. 60-point game, back-to-back, -back, 38 minutes, 37 minutes. He has some 50s there, really been around mid-40s a lot, so I absolutely get why you want to go there. It's a big-time pace-up spot versus the Hawks. The other thing is we know Capella is only going to play, you know, 24 or 25 minutes, and then the Hawks are fairly small. So it's a decent chance for uh, Jaron to kind of get some of those steals and blocks that he is so good at retrieving. All right, Clint Capella, absolutely love this matchup. I just hate the minutes that he's playing. Um, I haven't heard if he is still on a minutes limit, and that's the issue here. And they've just been slowly ramping him up. I worry to give him more than 25 minutes, which we're giving him right now. If he gets 26, 28, he's probably going to nuke the slate. Uh, but that's a big if. I just don't know if they're going to do that. And that's why Bruno Fernando becomes interesting. One thing, absolutely do not play Fernando and Capella together. The chance of them sharing the court very much is very, very slim. Um they could both get there, but they're both probably not having ceiling games. And that's kind of what you need, uh, you know, out of them to really take down a tournament. So I'm not really playing both of them. If Capella was cheaper, I would consider playing both. But 5,800 still a bit high uh, for me to want to play both. Uh, Rudy Gobert, we got to talk about him. So 8,500. Price is up there. My worry with him is 50 is about his ceiling. At 50, 53 the other night, he went for 25, 16, and had four steals blocks. Um, that's his ceiling. Like, he's not going for 30, 20. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, how many 30 point games does this guy have in his career? Very few. Um, so that is my my one concern is his ceiling is right around 50 and he's 8,500. However, super consistent mid 40s when he's getting the minutes, which he's been getting lately. 40 minutes uh, last night, 39 the before that, 40 before that, 42, 39. So his minutes are there. I think you can push this projection up onto 38 minutes, no problem. Um, but yeah, that, that's my big worry is that, you know, his ceiling is legit. It's high. It's 50. Uh, but you're just not going to see a 60 from him. Now, that consistency is absolutely worth paying for at times. And if he's high 40s, high 50s, you're going to be stoked on him. Um, and while his ceiling isn't, you know, incredibly high, the consistency consistency of which he's able to hit 50 is fairly noteworthy as well you know i mean we're looking at this screen right here and he has what 10 12 <laughs> right around 48 or 50 so that's uh something very notable as well definitely am a little bit intrigued on gobert as i am bam out of bio bam's price continues to fall we know he has that huge ceiling when he gets it going uh so definitely intrigued by a going to him in a game versus OKC that, you know, they're going to need him. They're going to need him to cover Chet a little bit and do a lot of different things that he can do. So intrigued uh, with Bam. And then I just wanted to throw out Rashawn Holmes to complete punt. Uh, I was not expecting him to play 25 minutes last game. He played 25 off the bench. 
there's a path for him to do it because they don't have a center. He is their only real center. That or uh, Eugene um, as well. But they haven't been getting Eugene the minutes. He's just a very small center, so he, he's more of a power forward. But uh, I think Holmes is interesting. He's, you know, right around 0.93 fantasy point per minute coming off the bench. He would be in a very good matchup versus the Hornets. There is a chance that they put him at start starter, and he played 30 minutes last time he started. So they are willing to give him the minutes. Uh, it is a flyer that I think you can take that has some sort of a ceiling there. So that's why I wanted to bring him up. I'm currently not getting too much of him. And I think the reason I'm not getting too much is because I'm just getting to a lot more Kuzma and Denny. But uh, I could absolutely see a path to him getting there and one of Kuzma or Denny not getting there. So uh, definitely intrigued with that one. So I wanted to bring it up. And then let's get over to the center spot on DK. We got Kyle Kuzma. We got Rashawn Holmes. Holmes is only 3,700 on DK. So much more appealing there. Uh, he is higher owned, so you got to take that with a grain of salt. But if he's not starting, I would expect that ownership to be lower than that just because it is risky. I mean, he could play at 25, but he could go back to nine. You know, you, you really don't know where his minutes are going to be if he's not starting. Well, even if he does start. So uh, I do like him. I think I'm intrigued, but uh, just be wary of him in the situation. Think about Think it through. And figure out for yourself. Jaron Jackson, 8,200 is too cheap. Get why people are going there. And on to the matchup tool. Clint Capella absolutely dominating on the top matchup with Nick Richards right there. Uh, I do think Nick Richards is interesting. My issue with him is they just don't want to give him more than 28 minutes. So... I, I think he's in a great spot, and I don't mind getting to him. Um, I think there is a real path to him crushing this slate, uh, but it's going to be the situation where he's playing 33 minutes. Uh, what would happen is maybe he starts out hot. Uh, Wizards are struggling to guard him because, frankly, he's like a seven-footer, and Wizards have nobody similar to that size. And, you know, he's able to just impose his will. So that's the way that he gets good. He starts crushing early, just gets extra minutes. Uh, but it could go the other way where, you know, he's chasing around Kuzma, not being effective on the defensive side. Uh, and, you know, they pull him early and take Grant Williams to slow down Kuzma. So I, I think it's an interesting play here, but it could go either way. And Bam is showing up a bit as well. And Kuzma's right here too. Uh, Jonas Valanciunas could absolutely slam in this uh, role. One thing is, I mean, he generally does play a lot of minutes versus Philly, but that's usually with Embiid. So, you know, I don't think he's going to chase around Paul Reed a, mu a bunch, but I think he will be out there maybe when Mo Bamba is. Um, so his minutes are going to be, you know, all over the place. I uh, don't mind taking a couple swings, but I also don't love the spot for him. So that'll do it for us today, guys. We are going to the weekend. Wish you guys the best. Good luck. Let's get some takedowns. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Helps us a ton. And come join us at Lion Star. Let's dominate.